Hi everyone. Well, here it is. Mrs. Wilberforce's house, which I commissioned from Tom Marshall of Buggles Kelly Station. And this is, of course, for my model railway build for Lady Killers. And I cannot tell you how excited I was to get the box, open it up and find this inside. It's truly exceptional. And Tom has done an amazing job. I'm thrilled to bits. Now, if you've seen the film, you know that the house is pretty much a character all by itself in the film. It is, of course, where Mrs. Wilberforce lives, but who can forget all those numerous scenes inside the house where, for example, she's banging on the pipes with a mallet to make the water run, or the scenes where she's interrupting the quintet as they rehearse with numerous cups of tea. And of course, there's that lovely scene where all the little old ladies gather for the performance. <laughs> It's a great film. I've seen it so many times already as I build the layout and still lots more viewing to come, which is not really a hardship, is it? Currently, the house is still at the level one stage. I've got three levels to build and the house is going to sit on level two, roughly about here, right at the front so visitors can get a really good look at it. And it's definitely worth looking at it really up close. And I'll show you some pictures now. Um, as I said, there are some roof tiles missing. I love the pile of rubble at the side of the house. At the back, there's a tiny little water butt and there's even a bricked up window on this side. It really is exquisite. I'm so, so thrilled and happy with it. As I said, I commissioned the house from Tom Marshall of Buggles Kelly Station. And I had a chance to catch up with Tom for a lovely chat where he explained all about the build process. So welcome to Tom Marshall from Buggles Kelly Station and Tom, is the genius behind my version of Mrs. Wilberforce's house, which sits pride of place while well, still in its box, but about to be on the new Lady Killers layout. And I can't wait to see how it all looks. I also can't wait to start painting it. So that will be in a future episode. So Tom, welcome. Thank you. It's great to be here. So tell me a little bit about your um, fascination with Mrs. Wilberforce's house or the Lady Killers film itself. It's um it's sort of my era of of film really. Um, my favourite films were growing up with the Ealing comedies. Um, so that sort of era, anything nineteen thirties through to nineteen sixties is my sort of era of of film and TV. So it was one of the the first dark comedy films really, um, and that obviously influenced a lot of later things. So yeah, I've always been a fan of that, and I love. Um, heist films there's just something about it with the team coming together and this is obviously one of the best kind of crime capers out there i'd say oh i agree i just love the film and uh for the purpose of the layout i'm i've bought the film and have watched it numerous times and numerous more times to come but just every time i watch it i never ever get bored because the level of detail and the colors and the characters yeah is just amazing it's also the um obviously the railway connection as well there's not there's the trains constantly going back past in the background but that was always fascinating to see um because i love old sort of pathé film of 40s and 50s just just watching you know trains go by steam train era um and and you see a lot of stuff in that film um just going by in the background of the house and obviously the the scenes at the the railway station as well so yeah that was always good to see and anyone watching, there are outtakes on YouTube of, you know, outtakes from the film itself with uh, the classic locos going past. And one thing that strikes me is the amount of smoke and steam yeah. that was in the air. So I think I'm going to have my work cut out for me, making all the buildings really grimy. <laughs> well, that's sort of, that's the best. That's the best bit. I find that with any um, most of the models that I do tend to be weathered. <laughs> so I, I like um uh, anything grimy that's kind of the most fun part for me is making it um dirtying it up with with smoke and weathering powders and things after the fascinating thing about the house as as you know is it's a complete set the street yep. exists frederica street and if you go there now you can see the start of frederica street but where they filmed it is now a new housing estate and one of my subscribers actually said his grandfather was an artistic director on the film and the house was built over the wall so you could yes, actually heard that. <laughs> move from the front to the back. So in building Mrs. Wilberforce's house, you 3D printed it. What was the process? Talk us through how you went about it. Okay, the first thing I did was watch the film again, because um, I haven't seen it for a few years. But I, I, um, I took screenshots 
every screenshot I could find that showed the house from different angles. Um, and I kind of built a mood board together with everything in Photoshop so I could see all the angles um, that are visible in the film. Some bits you can't see at all. There's the rear of the house is only seen in the distance on one of the shots where, they, where he's um, pushing him over the edge of the bridge. And you can kind of see the house in the background. So I knew that there was a window on the first floor only from that shot. So, yeah, that was the first job was getting all the screenshots together. Um, and then I, the, the program that I use for buildings is Tinkercad, which is a web-based, uh, design software and I build everything brick by brick. So I started by, um, having the, the screenshots on one screen and then on my, I've got a three screen set up here so I can watch something as well at the same time, but I'd have on my main screen, the, um, Tinkercad program, and I'd literally count the bricks in the, the, um, shots that I could see and start from there. So I'd build it a wall at a time and add more detail as I went along. Well, that level of attention to detail is so apparent, Tom. I mean, the model itself is really beautiful. I'm so thrilled to have it on the layout. It's a real privilege. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. But of course, you know, Mrs. Wilberforce's house is just one of many buildings and characters you've developed. Tell us a little bit more about what you do. Well, um, Buggles Kelly Station is a sort of company that I built up from, um, yeah, started with the Will Hay film, Oh, Mr. Porter, which is one of my favourite films. Um, I run the Will Hay Appreciation Society, so that's sort of, that's the reason I started making these models. So I wanted to model the railway um, Buggles Kelly from Oh, Mr. Porter. So, uh, yeah, I designed the station and signal box from that, and I sort of went on um, building my own model railway, um, I'm building a Sodor-based layout, and I wanted to do original buildings for that. So everything, every building that I designed for that, I would add to my range, and it's gradually sort of built up a, a range of buildings based on TV and film um, fiction. Uh, basically, The Lady Killers is a really nice fit into that because you'll get the the railway enthusiasts who like that side of the film and obviously modellers who want to model the house. So, yeah, it seemed a, a good fit. And as well as it being a complete set on the film, um, I know that the screenwriter, William Rose, he dreamt the film. You may know this story as well. He woke up one morning and said to his wife, I've just dreamt a film. And then, then he went off and wrote it. If only that would happen to me. Yeah. <laughs> I find writing quite a laborious process. But um, so he went off and wrote the film and I was told that because it, it was based on a dream, the colours used in the film are quite dreamlike. And I've noticed that there's a lot of wishy-washy colours in the background, but some vibrant colours that stand out. That's my yes. challenge. So what's your advice to me when it comes time to paint it? OK, well, um, I always start with the smaller details first because it's a lot easier to mess them up. Um, so what I tend to find is I'll start with the guttering, the windows. I use acrylic paints, sorry. So I use dropper bottles. Um, Humbrol or Vallejo are the brands that I use just because I find them best to work with. And I'll always start with the smaller details. So I'll paint the the gutters, I'll paint the windows um, and all the, the fine details and then finish with the brickwork because I find that it can cover over anything. You don't have to be as neat on the smaller details if you're covering it over with the brickwork afterwards. Um, and get it looking um, sort of uh, a uniform colour so everything's painted and then finish it off with a black wash which is uh, one part black acrylic to ten parts water. That's sort of the ratio I use. You might have to test with, with something to see if you get it right and then wash everything in black wash, especially somewhere near a railway. Um, it's going to be filthy. So, uh, And what that does is that fills in all of the gaps between the bricks. So all of the mortar is filled in with black. Because if you actually look at the photos, it's not gray or white mortar. Um, it's black because obviously it's it's soot and that's where it sits. Um, so yeah, finish off with a black wash. And then when it's dry, I'll get a, a, a bit of off white and then take most of the paint off um, on some uh, kitchen roll and then dry brush the whole thing and it picks up the highlights especially the roof tiles uh, the edges of the the brickwork and it just gives it a nice finish afterwards fantastic wow wow that sounds really helpful thank you <laughs> I, do, 
I do love a bit of dry brushing, actually. It really is an effective technique, isn't it? Just with that. Yeah. Point. Yeah, lovely. I'm getting really excited now. I still <laughs> I still have quite a bit of the layout to build before it comes time to paint. But um, if I had my way, I'd be painting it right now. But uh, yes, yeah, so that's very, uh, very, very helpful. And I'm sure a lot of my viewers will find that helpful as well. As well as painting it, of course, I'm going to try and add a few little effects to the house. This is all an experiment. Whether it will happen or not, I don't know. Luckily for me, Tom has made the house completely hollow. Is that right, Tom? It is, yes. So what I've done is normally when you 3D print something, it prints upside down. So you need supports um, to hold it so it doesn't completely fall apart. So what I've done with this house, it's the first time I've tried it, is I've actually designed it so that the interior supports I've cut away, you can cut away completely from the edges. Um, and that should leave a, a big hollow space inside so you can fit a speaker, you can fit any interiors that you want. Um, you can fit uh, interior glazing and things like that. So there is a little piece of printed uh, glazing for the porch. I don't know if you found that. Um, yes. but And the other, <laughs> other windows just need a piece of uh, clear plastic sticking to them and then curtains or whatever. But if you want the interior so the lights can show through, then there's plenty of space inside there to fit something. I'm just thinking, obviously, after the film was over, they would have taken down the set. Weird to think that that whole building is now rubble or was rubble. Have you ever thought about recreating a, a bigger version, like a life-size version? <laughs> yeah, if I had the space for it. People keep saying that about my other buildings. They wanted a life-size Buggles Kelly station. I thought, well, if you can give me the money for it, I'll. Uh... <laughs> if you pay for it to be built, that that'll be fine. But I don't think you could three D print something that big. So, yeah, it might have to be built out of other materials. Yet, yeah, let's you Yet. never say yeah. never. <laughs> but there you go, everybody. There's the offer. If anybody would like to buy a full size uh, Buggles Kelly station, then Tom is your man. I'll do <laughs> providing... your quote. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> providing your pockets are deep. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Lovely. So just one last thing. The house itself is available and to purchase from your website. Uh, tell me what gauges it's available in. Yeah, it's available in several um, different scales uh, from tiny uh, T gauge, which is one to 450, um, all the way up to double O. There's quite a few different scales there. Um, they're not all available hand painted, but um, the larger ones are. I actually have um, the that's the Z gauge. So it shows the sort of, I don't know if that's in focus, but yeah. So you get all the detail you get on the larger ones, but obviously on a much smaller scale. Lovely. Gauge. Fantastic. Wow. Again, every time I see it, I get a little buzz of excitement. It is lovely. And as the focal point of um, the layout, it I know it's going to draw lots of visitors and lots of people are going to want to see the house itself. Just a lot more work to crack on with. My deadline yeah. is December the 15th, so um, wish me luck. Yes, good luck. <laughs> Thanks to Tom for some painting tips there. I'm definitely going to need them. I'm going to be painting this house a little bit later in the process, and that will be an episode in its own right. So please, if you don't want to miss it, and you don't want to miss any future episodes of the Lady Killers Model Railway Build, then please do hit the subscribe button. And more importantly, hit the bell button and then you'll be notified of all my future videos. That's it from me. I hope to see you next time. Take care. Bye-bye. If you like this video, please do like, share and subscribe and hit the bell to be notified of all my future videos. And why not browse the shop at modelrailwayquest.com forward slash shop. And to receive a 10% discount on everything in the shop, become a Questy. Join the Model Railway Quest membership to receive that discount and a whole bunch of perks and goodies. Details on how to join are above. I'm Dawn Quest and this is Model Railway Quest. <laughs>